they got to do it on their own. A man who does do it on his own more frequent than in an embarrassing way than he probably wishes to let on on a radio show is Andy Raymond. He's unfiltered. He's back. Hello, everyone. Uh, yes, I'm Australian, so fire away. No, well, I'm going to start with what has been the most glorious sport to watch over recent times, <laughs> and that's your batting <laughs> in India. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be me. It's only part-time viewing because it's not long-time viewing. (laughs) And then look at the look on Steve Smith's face. He's looking. He's still looking down the wicket. He's still waiting for the ball. It's actually hit your stumps, your plonker. Why do you think that your team overthinks it? Is is that what it is? These are good batsmen, mate. Mate, they are. They're good batsmen, and um, I tell you, there's a lot of talk over here this week that. that we're, we're home track bullies. We bullied the West Indies. We bullied South Africa. We bully everyone that comes over. And we've gone travelling and we've folded like a deck chair. Um, amazing. Absolutely amazing. The fact that um, we folded, we, we crumpled, we submitted all of the above. Um, it was terrible technique and terrible batting. But what I think more people are concerned with, it was so meek. It was, it was terrible. There, there was no one that, you know, the old saying, you know, back in the day with the rugby league or rugby union player, you'd say, bite down on your mouth guard and get out there and have a go. Mm. Well, no one bit down on the mouth guard. Uh, just terrible. Um and, and I know, mate, this was really important to me. I know television cameras now get into places where they haven't in previous generations, but I, I really concentrate in the look of the eyes of the batsman that's just got out as he's walking back to the pavilion. And the camera can now show you that, uh, where it hasn't in generations past. And they were on a walk you know, back to get some sandwiches. There wasn't anger. No. Um, it was almost smug a bit. Oh, you know, yeah, gee, that's a tough wicket. No one could bat on that. Well, no, incorrect, mate. I didn't see that hurt in the eyes or on the face, and, and that's what I wanted to see. Good call. Really good call because this frustrates the hell out of me about my round ball football side as well. You know, and and, 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 I, and I, I savagely criticised the Warriors players for it last year when they got dicked. Uh, you know, you just, you want to see some pain that you are feeling as a fan. You know, you want to see some frustration. You want to see some annoyance. You want to see all of that. Look, these guys have all, you know, I, I honestly believe, Andy, that sport, sport has changed and I'm not sure that the way it has changed is actually for the better You know, I've just been celebrating today in 1978, the New Zealand cricket team, as they were known then. They weren't called the Black Caps, a fancy marketing name. They were just the New Zealand men's team. Beat England for the first time, 1978, in a cricket test. Monumental for us, because you bastards wouldn't even play us for years. You didn't think we were good enough. And anyway, we beat the the Poms. You know, and just talking to one of the players, John Ryder, opened the batting. It's just a completely different set of circumstances, and I know it can't be replicated, but there's something honest about a guy that drives in a Holden with his mate to the game. There's something honest about a guy who New Zealand cricket forgot to send tickets to to actually turn up to the second test when he was opening the batting. You know, it's it's the humbleness of it, and I believe that you know the the way it is these days, the amount of money, the social media accounts, the fact that you know you've got fandom out there who just giggle and all they want to, you know, some kind of reply on some snap dick whatever it is, that you've you've lost your edge. And Australia, well, you know, where is the where's the Alan Border in that team who just sat there and said, I'm going to bat for three hours and not get any runs just to annoy the crap out of you bowlers? Where's that guy? Mate, I, I fully agree. I'm going to wind the clock back about, oh, I'm going to say 13, 14 years. Uh, I was calling for Fox Sports, and it was Penrith versus the Warriors on a Saturday night, on Super Saturday, and it was the last game. So it was 9.30 finish time over here, I think. So it's, you know, mid, come midnight in New Zealand. And Penrith did an absolute number on the Warriors. And yeah. at the end of the at the end of the game, there were smiles and jokes all round. And like the Warriors, I mate, I don't know the score, but it was a forty or a fifty or a sixty point smashing. 
And the Warriors players were joking and laughing and hugging it out uh, with the Penrith players on the field. And there was stone silence on the broadcast for about five seconds, which felt like about five minutes or five hours. You know, five seconds on a television yeah, broadcast it's, it's an without any commentary yep. is huge. And I exploded. And it was the first time I'd really had a blow up. And I ripped into the Warriors players so much so that during the week, um, one of the officials got in contact with me and two of the players got in contact with me and the conversations, they, they were brutal. They were absolutely brutal and they tried to rip me a new one and, and, and I, I just wouldn't cop that. No way in the world. Um Long story short, about two years later, uh, the same official came up and he said, mate, um, yeah, I overreacted and those blokes have been moved on. Um, they realised when they, they sat back and thought about it and watched it again and watched what people would perceive as a lack of anything, they realised they were wrong and the players got moved on um, and and a, a little switch was flicked. Now, you know, different sports, different era, but same philosophy, mate. Uh, professional sport, don't worry about how many Instagram followers or likes you've got. Uh, mate, maybe for a while, don't look at your average and, and don't try and set records every game. Just get out there and have a crack. And look, I'm actually expecting Australia to do that in a big, big way this next test. And I'm really excited about it because our backs are up against the wall. And let's I think see what you got. Terrific. Yeah, let's see what you got. Let's see, let's, let's see what terrific. you made of. You're playing for your goddamn country. That's what it is. You're playing for your goddamn yeah. country. You embarrassed yeah. yourself last time. Get out there and show that you got some. The All-Stars game in 100%. Rotorua. Mate, I watched this game, and normally I don't watch pre-season games, but I watched the Warriors, of course, against West Tigers, and we'll talk about that in a second because we are winning the Premiership this year. You know that after that performance. But I was, wa- I, was watching yeah. that, I was watching that All-Stars game. Jeez, I'll tell you what, the physicality was there. No question about that. The crowd was roaring, and again, it's an indication. Take the game to the people. Come on. This is what rugby yep. needs to do. Take the show on the road. But I wanted to ask you about, you know, in, a day later in the Ireland france test, there was a, a stand-up tackle, shoulder which hit chest, goes into jaw, it got a yellow card. The guy Kerr that did that on yep. Fisher-Harris, why is rugby league, when you look at all the physical hard contact games that we love, rugby and league and the NFL, why is it the only sport that refuses to deal with the CTE post-concussive kind of condition thing? Surely a lawsuit is coming. The, the game can't be allowed to get away with that for much longer, can it, where it just gets put on report in a yellow card? That's a shoulder to the face. That's got to be red, doesn't it? But it, it, it does, and it, it is going to have to happen, but you've hit the nail on the head. There's a lawsuit coming, baby. There is a lawsuit from hell coming. And it's going to be in our generation. Look, I don't think it's going to be in the next year or two, but I think it's going to be, you know, something we will see over the next decade or two. There is going to be the lawsuit from hell and sport as we know it is going to change. And that's ice hockey, that's NFL, that's NRL, that's rugby union. That is boxing and mixed martial arts. Now, as big as boxing and mixed martial arts are at the moment, I don't think boxing and big mixed martial arts will be around in 20 years' time. I just don't. The sole purpose, and I love boxing and mixed martial arts, mate. Let me get that out there first. I love it, and I always have, and I always will. But the sole purpose in boxing and or mixed martial arts and or UFC is to punch your opponent in the face and better yet try and knock him out. When this lawsuit comes, people are going to run for the hills. It is going to be multi-billion dollar. There is going to be criminal charges laid. And from that moment, global sport will change. Totally agree. And boxing and MMA and UFC and anything else like that will not be around. Yes, it sounds dramatic. It'll happen 100%. Andy Raymond Unfiltered. AAU Unfiltered every Wednesday with us. Let's go back to the Warriors then, doing a number on West Tigers. Hey, don't tell me it's a preseason game. Don't tell me that this is a trial match. What I saw, what I physically saw, 
gives me enough to say that I wasn't going to go early this year, mate. I wasn't. I wasn't going to be drawn into that this year. I wasn't going to walk into that Black Widow spider web, get my head bitten off like she does every single year. But it is our year, and tell me it's not. I love pre-season. Yes. I <laughs> love it so much. And I look for two killer phrases on social media. It's our year and it's only a trial. Yep. And it's really easy to pick who supports who. If you win, it's your year. Yes. If you lose, it's only a trial. That's it. I think it's terrific. Mate, I was actually uh, really disappointed by and large with the general standard of play over week one. I thought it was crap. And I have watched uh, trial matches either on TV or in person for 30 years. The, the first couple of weeks of trial matches have never been great, and I'll admit that, but I thought the general standard of play was terrible, uh, and I'm really interested to see what happens this weekend. Mate, uh, with COVID and the interruption of sports, so we're going back three years. We're going back to 2020 when the Rugby League got suspended for, what was it, 10 weeks or eight weeks over here. But more so, the, the undergrades, the, the New South Wales Cup and all the junior football. It got suspended for 2020. It was severely impacted for 2021. Now, there has been several coaches and dozens of blokes, and this is maybe a story in itself. Um, there have been several coaches and several dozen different officials saying 2023 is going to be the year where very few debutants make their transition into the first grade because the game was so severely impacted. No one played footy in 2020 and in 2021, for the first seven months of the year, no one played footy in those junior years and junior grades. There is a hole in the developmental system. There's a hole in the developmental spike or the chart, however you want to term it. Um, and that's sort of what I saw on the weekend. I thought a lot of these kids that we had had high hopes for either collectively they all poop themselves on the same day or they are a step or two behind on their learning curve. So really interesting to look forward, mate. I don't know if other sports are going to go through this. I would assume the same would apply for rugby union across the board because pretty much they had a very similar void. Um, yes, the top division of world rugby continued playing, but everything else got cancelled. Everything else got put on the shelf. I wonder if Rugby Union has got that same void. Andy Raymond Unfiltered is the man. Just a quick word before we go. Um, the NRL obviously pouring money into the women's comp. Uh, look, it's the same as New Zealand rugby here. Uh, the, the, the thrash in the cash at the women's comp. Look, we all know that this the, this this is has to happen. The promotion of it, the support of it is great. I just hope that it, the, the swinging pendulum balances out. It needs still crowds. It needs eyeballs on. And they've got to also realise that this may take some time, Andy. It, it may not be instantaneous. And I hope that, you know, this isn't just an initial investment and then it, it tails off. People are going to take some time to warm to this. There's a lot of sport to watch at the moment. If you're a rugby league fan, watching the blokes play is more enjoyable than watching the women play. That doesn't mean I don't, I don't like, I don't dislike watching the women, but it's just a superior product at the moment. It's not a criticism. It's just what it is. Mate, go and say that on social media. Oh, no, again, I just heard that. I'll get, get, get my head bitten off, mate. You'll get howled down as being sexist and, and not giving the women a fair go. But it, it's fair play and it's fact, and I agree with you. Um, the women's product isn't there at the moment. Is it going to get there? I don't know. I don't know the lotto numbers for the future. I've got no idea. But at the moment, the product is there, uh, and it's good. But it's, it's not great. It, it's not. I am hoping it does get to the point where people actually want to watch and want to attend and want to follow it. But that point hasn't arrived yet, mate. So we've not got yet, to be no. really careful. And it's a delicate one. We've got to be really careful in a business sense that we don't overvalue this because if it implodes, it will implode in a massive way, starting with the sponsors then the consumers, then the players. 
Um, there's a lot of pressure on the girls to get this right. It took the guys a hundred years right, to get to professional, yeah. Yeah. Um, and and you know the women are trying to do it in 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 six years. It's it's a it's you know what it's an unfair ask. Um, I would like to see the game grow organically. Do I think it's full time professional at the moment? No, but I think that is on the horizon. Um, Really tough one. We all want to see it work, mate. We really do because the young girls, the young girls get excited watching the old girls play. Uh, and I say old girls very nicely. I mean that respectfully. But the young girls, the five to ten year olds, they think it is terrific. And these girls are their idols. And that is wonderful. That is wonderful. But are we there yet? We're not. We're just not. I want to see it grow organically. Hey, are you Andy Raman Unfiltered? What is on the podcast this week? Mate, we had a blast from the past. We had Noel Goldthorpe, a former Magpie Dragon, Adelaide Ram, Hunter Mariner, and North Queensland Cowboy. Uh, we've got the Cowboys' Reese Robson on tonight. And this week, we've got Penrith hooker Sony Luke on the weekend, dropping in another huge week on Andy Raymond Unfiltered, mate. Thank you so much, ARU Andy Raymond Unfiltered.